16th and Mission Streets, San Francisco. It may as well be called Mixon Street, since here, like nowhere else in the city, is a mix of every ethnicity, proclivity, and social class, either as residents, wannabes, or the simply curious. Here too, between 16th and 24th, and down many alleyways on either side of Mission Street, is the city's most vivid and creative concentration of street galleries. Murals painted on the walls of garages and alleyways, the backsides and sometimes front sides of businesses, warehouses, schools and playgrounds. Every surface, it seems, is fair game. Anything that stands still long enough to paint with a roller, a brush or a tattoo needle One especially vivid display of mural art can be found on Clarion Alley, a block-long festival of color and causes just south of 17th Street between Mission and Valencia. Launched in 1992 by six North Mission artists with the twin goals of social inclusiveness and aesthetic variety, it eventually drew hundreds of participants and has produced over 700 murals. Muralismo, as Latino locals sometimes call it, enjoys a venerable history. This popular art form migrated north from Mexico during the Depression. Its most famous exemplar, Diego Rivera, painted now celebrated murals during his sojourn in San Francisco in the early 30s. But according to most accounts, the mission's current crop dates from the 1970s as an outgrowth of Chicanismo, a largely Mexican immigrant movement for equal rights. Lacking access to mainstream media, Chicano artists, men and women, turned blank walls into platforms for public protest to express their concerns that proposed redevelopment threatened to uproot their still tentative efforts to settle in El Norte. Muralismo began as a political protest, but it was always too free-spirited to become trapped in the dead end of ideological militancy. Between its cartoon figures, its flagrant use of color, and its irrepressible sense of humor about itself, Mission Street art is more exuberant than angry. 
Strolling among these saturated colors and sinuous shapes, I always come away feeling a little bit better about the benighted state of our incorrigible species. Another source of the current blossoming of street art was the graffiti culture of anarchist artists who proudly called themselves vandals. Their antics frustrated many a city official and maintenance crew for decades with their branding of indecipherable personal logos on every vertical surface they could manage, not least of all commuter trains. Some of these self-described vandals have since morphed from stylized lettering into more ambitious themes and forms. With their growing maturity, they've gained increasing acceptance, even, God forbid, a certain respectability. 24th and Mission is another neighborhood of exceptional street art. Along alleys with names like Cypress and Lilac, artists have transformed once graffiti-scarred walls into vibrant street galleries. Now another wave of evictions by affluent aliens is driving the ethnic diversity and antic creativity out of an increasingly unaffordable city into a diaspora across the bay. In classic mission style, newly painted murals reflect a fierce local resistance to gentrification. The quarter's sunny disposition and artistic flair are among the greatest magnets for cash-rich but culture-starved techies. It's an almost biological process. Cash-poor artists in search of cheap lofts have always played the role of nitrogen-fixing legumes, like beans and peas, that enrich the cultural soil so it will support heavy feeders, like peppers, tomatoes, and techies, who will surely follow. The inspiration for much of the Mission's mural art came from Balmy Alley, several blocks east of Mission and 24th Streets. Here during the 1980s, local artists opposed to wars in Central America portrayed their concerns on the alley walls. Today, the gentrification of San Francisco and other more local issues share the space. Street art is as old as cave paintings, says Mission photographer Brock Hansen and as primal as the impulse to draw what you see for others to see. Billboards and ads dominate and deface our cityscapes, counterfeiting the creativity of street artists with none of their animating spirit. Even museums, with some exceptions, often house self-consciously rarefied art already gone stale in its isolation from the streets. Many ordinary people feel alienated from art because it seems to require an advanced degree just to appreciate. Wall art, as it thrives in the mission, requires no such credential. Its appeal is visceral, meeting you at eye level, amid the clamor of traffic and the grit of back alley bodies sleeping off a bender. And it's all the more potent for being found in this unkempt context that perfectly reflects the coexistence of ugliness and loveliness in most all things human. A third creative stream flows from both local art schools and artists drawn from far distant cultures by the zany energy of the mission's artistic renaissance. Nowadays, alley art may include contributions solicited through social media by volunteer curators. I met one such curator supervising painting by his 10-year-old son and a friend on Cypress Street. My name is Mace, Ex Vandals, WOD. My role here is uh, I'm one of the curators for this alley. Uh, I invite artists from around the world uh, to come and paint here in the Mission District in San Francisco. Uh, we've been doing this for about four years now, almost five. Um, this alleyway was uh, 
filled with uh, a bunch of tags and graffiti, I mean, uh, uh, gang tags and stuff like that. And we came and transformed it into uh, a street art gallery. I came in and I asked uh, one of the residents and then they gave me permission as well. And then I didn't stop from there. I went and contacted all the rest of the residents and had them uh, uh, give me permission to start this uh, a street gallery. Now, five years later, um, this, this and along with other alleys are in San Francisco uh, 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 tourist guides. So it's one of like the 40 cheap things to do in San Francisco, you know, to walk through the alleyways and, and check out the art. You know, we have people from all over the world come in and, and, and take pictures of the art and it travels, you know, with them. And it's all paintbrush and balmy alley. And then of course now with the new generation, we have spray paint. Anywhere that it's, it's a uh, run down and you know poverty stricken of course you know that's where graffiti comes from and that's where it will where it will survive it's it's not only a hobby it's a passion you know it's, it's something that's going to be part of me always when i was even younger than my son's age i mean the first time i picked up a crayon i would always draw so and it's 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 my outlet my son 10 years old michael uh aka city one yev Young experienced vandal. Um, yeah, it's my prized possession right here. He, he's, he's awesome. Hi, um, Kurt. He's, he's been painting and drawing since he was a uh, toddler, you know, and loving it ever since. So he's out here now and working with dad and some friends and keeping the legacy and, and, and the culture alive. It is a very beautiful thing. You know, and, and it's art. You know, a lot of people see this type of art and they think it, it's vandalism. You know, we're, we're not vandalizing, we're, we're it's humanizing, it's, it's uh, uh, what's the word? That may be the word. It's humanizing and dehumanizing. You know, uh, 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 it's, it's creative and destructive at the same time. How is it destructive? Because walls like this weren't meant to have art on it you know what i mean it's a building it's a house it's an apartment uh, 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 you would never realize that stuff like this could happen you know especially in in in, in, in cities and stuff you know this is an urban city so you know it, it works as if to underscore this insight i take my leave of muralismo by descending the escalator into the 16th Street BART station where my explorations began. And here I find not a Latino drummer or guitarist, but a classical cellist who's chosen this spot to share his public art. At first I think, how incongruous. But then again, here on Nixon Street, anything goes, and everyone is an artist who wishes to be. Enter at your own risk and pleasure. No credential required.